Meister of Santa Monica, California is recognized as pound for pound the strongest woman in the world. Pam can lift well over three times her own weight in the deadlift. I've never had anything in my life that I that I liked as much as powerlifting. I used to tell my mother when I was little that there was something that I was going to do. And I tell you, the minute I started lifting weights, I, I told my mom, this is it, mom, I love it. So when did you first pick up a weight? The first time, actually, my father got, he was a professional fireman, and he got injured in an accident, and uh, he got trapped in a burning building, and he came out and he had a minimal brain damage, but he still wasn't going to the Y, and he joined the Y when he was seven years old, seven. and so he was, he'd gone to the Y. By the time he passed away, he'd gone to the Y, y like 70 years, like, so, you know, it was just ridiculous. Okay. So he wasn't going anymore, so I said, I, can, I'll, come, I'll go play racquetball, teach me how to play racquetball. So we went in and it worked. He started going back to the Y, but then I didn't have anything to do. Now this is in Canton. Yeah. He's a firefighter in Canton. We exactly. go to the Y every day. Every okay. single day. Yep. And and so when I started in, I was playing racquetball with him. But then I couldn't play racquetball myself. I didn't have anything to do. So I, I the weight room was right there. And back then, this was 1977. Okay. Women weren't allowed in gym. And I know that's really hard for people to believe because it wasn't that long ago. But there were you just weren't. So I went into the weight room and I thought, well, let me just do this. And I picked it up and I played with it and messed around with it and I really liked it. And then one day I just happened to be in there at the same time the weight team was in there, Canton YMC weight team. And so when I, they said, you're really strong. Do you want to try something? I said, sure, yeah, let's try it. And I was stronger than anybody they'd ever seen. And they said, wow, we don't know where this is coming from, but you got to meet Henry McGee. Henry was the women's bodybuilding. He started, I think, as far as I know, he started that out of that. YMCA in Canton, Ohio. And that was the very first year. And I said, okay, let's do that. And from there, it just kind of went to, I, then I got a trainer and then I got an expediter. So when I went to national meets, I would have somebody who did my numbers for me. And uh, that's how I started. You began lifting the same year professional female, body became, be, female bodybuilding became a sport. And one year before women's powerlifting was even a competitive sport. Can you tell me more what it was like being a woman and lifting in the gym in the year 1977? You know, it was such a mixed bag. Sometimes in a gym like the Y, they loved me. They thought it was amazing and courageous. Lots of women didn't like it. And they would tell me, what are you doing? You're going to end up with great big muscles. And then when you get old, they're going to get flabby. And it was just an uh, uphill climb. And as my career went on and on, I got more and more women to realize, look, you don't get great big and flabby. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have enough t testosterone to grow as big as, you'd be lucky if you grow at all. And they usually, 95% of people, women who try to weight don't grow that fast and, and even that much if they don't want to. But now, of course, 40 years later, 43 years later, is a whole lot different. And I feel like there were a lot of gyms I had to go into and get kicked out of for the pr privilege for women to be accepted into gyms. The first thing I wanted to do when I got out on my own was start my own gym, so I did that. And women started coming to it like crazy. And now we see what women can do.
last nationals I did, it was the fourth one, I overestimate, I was hurt, I had gotten hurt at Gold's Gym, and I overestimated, I don't know if you know how powerlifting probably do, um, you don't ever take weight off the bar. You just put it on in competition. So the first person in this weight class, or the first person that's going to lift 200 pounds does it. And then they add 10 pounds. And the next person that wants to, whatever weight they put on, you slip in whenever the time comes. And what happened with me was I was done before they started. So that always started me off at kind of a, a weird thing. But unfortunately at this one, I had hurt my back before and I went in to do my, my, the, what I triple on a bench. And I bombed. I didn't do it. And it was like, you know, the end, it was a tragedy. It was such a tragedy. And the people place went, just went crazy. And it was very sad. But I decided not to lift, not to, to compete for a while. But I had already won three, so I thought this is probably good. And NBC found that I could get paid, that I wasn't going to be an amateur anymore. They called and wanted to know. They said they had to track me down, and they wanted to know if I wanted to do the color commentary for, um, for their sports, NBC Sports World, it was called. And I said yes. I said, actually, I covered the phone and I said to my dad, I said, what's a color commentator? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, no, you want to do that, do that. And so it, they, they hired me and then I did about 17 shows and uh, did the world's strongest man with the refrigerator moving and the truck pulling and stuff. And, and that was really fun. They wanted me to do uh, other sports. So I did one karate match and the guy, no, not karate, arm wrestling and the guy went, click and broke the other guy's arm and I told him I don't want to do that <laughs> anymore. I didn't like it. One time with MDC they had made me do, um, well at the World's Strongest Man I had to do, uh, what do you call it, sumo wrestling. I don't know anything about sumo wrestling. So they said, okay, you got a minute before you have to want to. And I told him, st and I still remember because it scared me so much, I told him sumo wrestling is an athletic art form that takes century to develop, to take century to develop. But the rules here will be rather loosely applied. The men stand, and I went through and told them exactly, and I still remember because it was so scary. But yeah. I know what she means, you do just. And then somebody would say, how many people are going to watch this? 15 million. Oh, I just <laughs> know <laughs> yet. How did your weightlifting background prepare you for working at NBC? Oh, knowledge, I think more than anything. Um, I knew what was going on, so I could do, I did the Mr. Olympia for them. And I could say the reason that he's probably going to be cut out is because his one, this muscle that isn't quite big enough or it's not striated enough or, and they didn't really know how to do that. So that was really good that, that, that a woman could actually know that. Now I feel the same way about football. The women are amazing. They can, I mean, what would we do without women commentators at this point? But back then, it was a little harder to get in. Did you encounter any challenges? Being one of the few female broadcasters, the same kind of challenges you did when you got into powerlifting, or by the 80s, was it a little bit easier for women to... No, no, I did, but I had really good people with me. I did a lot of my shows with Ahmad Rashad, and he was very pro-woman, so he helped a lot, you know, just kept me, well, when we traveled and things. But I still had a lot of fear, especially from what had happened to me before. I had fear that somebody was going to hurt me. And so staying strong and moving around a little bit, it worked out really well. I think that my dad was the most excited. He loved it. He was just so excited to have somebody. And then by the time I finished with NBC, people would recognize me in airports. And I was on the cover of the one magazine, and it would be on the stands in Germany. <laughs> it would just be so weird. So yeah, that, there were some challenges, but nothing I, yeah. And then had watching people get their wrists broken, that was. When I was 17, I needed to get out of Canton. And I guess this is where my life kind of took a dive. I, uh, I got raped and beaten in Washington, D.C. when I moved there to work for the Navy. And I worked at the Pentagon for a while, and then I worked in offices. But it changed my life. I, it never, I never got over it, not until today. I mean, it's just, I'm a me too. And one of the reasons when I went in the gym, when I started lifting, I started thinking, you know, if I can get really, really strong, that'll never happen to me again. Now I realize that it probably is not going to matter because men are stronger and you just got to be careful. You got to learn what you have to do. But I, and I don't regret having gone to Washington, D.C. and having that happen. But since it did, strength was really important to me. So that was another one of the big reasons that I got into that. And my brothers and sisters all went to college and I went to weightlifting. So I got, um, instead of being a Kappa Phi, I was in Delta Phi with my Delta <laughs> <laughs>
went and had a mammogram, and then I got new insurance, so I had to go back and have another one in like four months, which nobody wants to do. But I thought, this is so stupid. And I went in and got it, and they called and said, we found breast cancer, so you're going to have to come in. And I said, oh, okay, when, you know, I'm shocked. And I said, when do I come in? She said, I don't know, hold on. And she thought she put me on hold, but she didn't. I could hear her. And she said, this is that woman that has that really aggressive cancer. When do you want to see her? And I thought, oh, my God, no, this could be. Because my husband's first wife died of breast cancer. So it was just so like, and everything she had, I had exactly the same. You know, they'd say it was in situ. It was, there's so many terms in, in breast cancer. So it was, to me, that was like, I had already done a lot of stuff I wanted to do. I had just got married again and had great kids. And I figured if this is the time, this is, this is it. And it wasn't. Do you feel like your background in weightlifting either helped prepare you for this great fight or helped get you through it, perhaps? No, oh, every single bit. All the people I did cancer radiation and th chemotherapy with have, have passed away. And they told me that the reason I, I did it was because I was so healthy when I started out. And it's a really good idea to stay healthy. But that has really put me on a really fast track to staying healthy. So for 20 years ago, I work out a lot now. Well, until COVID. Mm. Now I just sit and look. No, I still work out a lot, but I just don't go to the gym as much. Did you ever think you were going to die? Yeah. Yeah, I figured. And, you know, my, I had three aunts who had breast cancer. And then I had, uh, it was really bad. It was just a really bad cancer for some reason. Because it was aggressive and it was traveling fast and it was just weird cancer. So I thought I was, but I wasn't really upset about it too much. You know, I'd done a lot. It's like when I go back through my life working with NBC and winning world championships, it was a pretty good life. And then like it got started in a really bad way. Maybe that's why it went uphill from there and just kind of got really good. You trained, uh, after your battle with breast cancer, you trained and competed in triathlons with a survivor group. What does the word survivor mean to you? Mm. Wow. Well, I, I, I wear survivor a lot. I wear that in my heart a lot because I didn't um, know that I would. But when I got into this group, it was all women who had breast cancer and in every, every different stage. And we all got together, and I couldn't swim at the time. I was 50 years old, I couldn't swim. So we, got, we had a coach, an Olympic coach came in and trained us because we were cancer survivors, and taught me how to swim. And it was really com the camaraderie of all these women who had breast cancer. And a couple of them, while we were doing that, had recurrences, and two of them died while we were in the, you know, in the middle of triathlons. One of them just had keeled over, and they took her to the hospital, and she didn't, she didn't live. And then one of my really good friends, um, she had to go to the hospital and she had to be intubated and they said she'd probably be five days maybe and she lived three months and I went there every single day. And it was just sad, sad to watch that happen but happy to know that it doesn't always happen. Some of us live. What advice would you give to 1977 Pam, to a woman that's in her early 20s getting into or interested in getting into the gym for the first time? Get married, settle down, don't do it. No. <laughs> no, I definitely wouldn't say that. <laughs> no, I would say, you know, you gotta, you, if you, the thing is you gotta stay in shape. And it doesn't matter whether you go to gym and lift weights, it's a fabulous thing, because then you can kind of, I like weights because you can put on a little bit more and feel really good, and then just a little bit more, just a couple more pounds. And it, it's fun, and there's a lot of camaraderie now with women who are very serious about lifting. And the, unserious ones the women who come in the gym and they're just there to be cute is is not it doesn't happen as much as it used to and that makes me very happy because it's not it's not this is our health this is how what we do to stay in shape so yeah i would say definitely keep up with the workouts so i was a cheerleader in high school so that's really what started me with working out at all and now i look at these cheerleaders and they do so much stuff we did backflips and that was good <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today and answer those questions. Thank you for covering it. Absolutely. Appreciate it.
We're back here with Pam Meister taking a look at this amazing trophy collection. So what do we have here on the table? Uh, we got a bunch of smaller ones, and then we've got my All-American. We right here, this plaque. And this. And we got this one that was Outstanding Lifter. I noticed it was April 1st. Maybe, maybe it was a joke. <laughs> you were saying before, mm -hmm. off camera, a lot of the trophies oh, yeah. have men on them. They didn't even have nope. women lifters. I used to want to put a little wig on him. Girl, this was um, Best Lifter in 1980. The plaque back there has some of the stuff that I did during the time I was lifting, and I don't even remember some of it, like the Japanese show I had forgotten about, and some of the volunteer things. Another national title or world title. 